The English countryside in the height of summer, all the trees in full leaf. The electric pylons stride across the ripening fields like symbols of power. The corn stands high. How rich and full of plenty it all seems. But wild creatures are not deceived by appearances. The squirrel in the trees, the fox below, the birds, the insects, all know that a time of plenty will not last forever. Even the plants and trees themselves know that hard times may come and prepare for them. The leaves look quiet enough outside, but if you get a chance to look at the leaf cells inside, you'll find that they're full of activity, collecting and preparing food. For power, they use the sunlight that falls upon them, just as the housewife uses electricity. And with the help of the sunlight, the leaf you see here and these potato cells are storing sugar away in the form of little round starch grains. Potato plant rations itself, using only so much sugar in summer and storing the rest for the winter below ground. As the store grows, so the potato tuber gets bigger. It is because vegetables and plants have so much nourishment stored in them that they make such good food. For instance, on his cabbages, the gardener is almost certain to find the wise snail tucking in before him. Close up, wise snail. And if it isn't a snail, it's a caterpillar. Caterpillars should be copied, for they are very economical feeders. They eat up every bit of the meal before them, as this devastated patch of plants shows. Rabbits, too, eat steadily, not wasting any bits. And cattle work pretty methodically through the meadow that is their week's ration. Sheep are very careful and economical feeders as well. But sometimes in the country you'll see a leaf with a hole cut out. And this bit hasn't been eaten. It's been cut out by the leaf cutter bee who is here at work. She carries the piece of leaf back to her home, a hole in this wooden shed support. She drags the leaf inside, up all those stairs. And here you see she has rolled pieces of leaf round to make cells which she finishes off neatly. Then off she flies to the flowers to collect pollen, showing that a leaf cutter bee is not above doing the work of an ordinary bee. Home again. When she's filled a cell with pollen, she lays an egg in it. There is just enough pollen for the bee grub to eat when it hatches out, until it grows up. There's an egg on pollen on the right-hand side. Here is the grub full grown, and there's not a grain of pollen left, not a grain wasted. The grub turns into a bee that in its turn flies off next year and collects pollen from the flowers. And here's an ordinary honey bee, the famous busy bee, the symbol of energy. Although the countryside and the gardens are full of flowers, the wise bee isn't led away into believing that because there seem to be plenty of food, you should eat the lot. No, the bees take the food they've collected home to the hive. Some bring honey, but the ones that are light-coloured are covered with the pollen they've collected. Let him alone. Inside the hive, the bees put away their food into wax cells ready for the winter. But pollen and honey are foods that keep well if they're just sealed up with wax. The honey bees can make their stores easily. But what about their cousin, the sand wasp? Well, what about her? Here she is, busily digging her store covered in the sand. On a small plant nearby is a large spider which she has caught. She's going to pack it up away in the hole, purely for the spider's own protection, of course. When it seems deep enough, she goes away to fetch the spider. Has anyone been interfering while she's been away? No, it looks all right down here. Where's that spider? Soon get her in now. What do you think you are, a cork? On the spider, the wasp lays her egg. To keep the provision of food fresh for the grub that will hatch out, she has injected a preservative into the spider, 
so none of the baby's rations will be lost by going bad. Enough is provided and no more. And then Mother Wasp seals up the hole which is nursery and larder combined. The sand wasp's home is usually on a sunny heath and the shrike, a little brown bird, uses sunshine to preserve its food from going bad. Inside a thorn bush, difficult to see, is the shrike's larder of sun-dried food, a shrew mouse, a bee impaled upon a thorn, wasps and blue bottles, all sun-dried and nourishing. The shrike catches enough food for its needs and wastes nothing by letting food go bad. Most wild creatures are careful not to waste food, for in the woods and hills food is hard to come by. On the edge of the wood is the sparrow hawk's nest. Father brings a meal, and mother rations it out carefully among the three little hawks. The tough bit she eats herself rather than waste them. The food is carefully rationed among the babies, each being fed in turn. Below the nest is a rabbit warren. Here the badgers have gone hunting. But the sport was poor. Only one rabbit between two and the owner doesn't appear prepared to share. We could really do with another rabbit. Hi you. What me? Badgers, like most Britons, are meat eaters. But when this one is convinced that there are no more rabbits about, he trots away to the woods and makes a vegetarian meal off the bark of a tree. Judging by the tree when he's finished, he must have had as much nourishment as if he'd eaten ten rabbits. Prowling round the hedgerows is the polecat, a confirmed egg eater. He'll eat eggs as long as they're available, hang the expense. But when the egg season is over, the polecat is very adaptable. Often he goes off to the village and there in the scrap iron dump finds a change of diet. Nature certainly never meant the polecat to eat tin salmon, but he doesn't mind it. As the autumn comes on, the woods are full of berries of all kinds, sloes and crab apples, nuts and acorns. Wild creatures might be forgiven if they thought food was so plentiful that they could just go on eating and eating. But they're too wise to be deceived by appearances. The squirrel is collecting acorns. The dormice are gathering hips and haws. So when the last leaves fall and winter comes, the wild creatures sleep safely through the hard times with their stores of food ready for emergencies. Hips and haws in the nest of the dormouse on the hedge. The squirrel in its dray among the branches has a larder of nuts and acorns. Inside the hive, the community of the bees is safe, and in the winter of war, the government is playing its part for us. Like the bees, the Ministry of Food is collecting food, planning its use, storing it for the whole community. Well, we have enough flour for this district, and sugar, and what about meat? <laughs> well, oh yeah. Insects and birds and animals are guided by instinct, but human beings, the man and woman in the street, are supposed to have intelligence. You, sir. What, me? Are you as wise as the badger that eats vegetables when it can't get meat? You can't always reckon to have as much meat as that, you know. Try a dinner of vegetables and cheese. It's just as nourishing as all the meat you're used to. It's not bad, is it? No, it's obviously pretty good. Go on, don't be fussy. His wife's moving dishes into the kitchen. And what's she up to now? You, madam, wait a minute with all those cabbage leaves and potato peelings. Aren't you as sensible as the caterpillar that eats up all its vegetable food? Don't waste all those, they're good. Make them into vegetable soup and stock, don't waste them. And what's this one doing with all those bits and pieces left on the plates? Madam, you haven't got half the sense of a leaf cutter bee. She judges exactly how much food her family will want. No bits are left over to be wasted. You try and judge a bit more the quantities you need. Isn't it marvellous to be able to talk to a woman like that? Gone bad, has it? It's criminal to waste food like this. Think of the sand wasp. She doesn't waste her spider like that, she preserves it. You should have put your pie carefully away in a cool larder. 
Or better still, put food into a refrigerator. Remember her? She's the sparrow hawk. She makes the family rations go as far as possible. Now then, Mum, filling the teapot, do you serve food carefully so that you all get different sorts of food? You know, bodybuilding food, energy-giving food, and protective food every day. And you, Dad, do you eat plenty of green vegetables? Are you as wise as this rabbit? Blimey, he is a rabbit. Now you, madam. I know what you're going to say. Do I collaborate like the bees in storing food? Yes, I do. I live in the country, and I've joined the Women's Institute plan for cooperative jam making. I've given the fruit from my garden, and the group gets the sugar, and we share the jam. We're wise. Oh, really? Now, what about these? Thanks to the Navy and the Merchant Service, there's food in all the shops. But because there's plenty about, there's no need to be extravagant. Can he really want all these? You're not as wise as the dormice or squirrels who are economical in the midst of plenty. You buy stuff just because you see it in the shops. Well, really, we don't like to say too much in case that woman is still hanging about. But human beings are supposed to be intelligent. But when it comes to the wise use of food, are they as wise as these animals, these birds, these insects? Or even the potato? Well, are they?